The average American throws away 81 pounds of clothing every year, and the rise of fast fashion is causing that number to increase. Americans now buy 400% more clothes than they used to in the 1980s. Many people donate their clothes without realizing that most of them end up in landfills. Secondhand clothing that is exported to developing countries is killing local industries, so many have now stopped accepting used garments. It is estimated that every year, 24 billion pounds of clothing waste, including jeans, end up in landfills. Moreover, most of our clothing is made of blended fabrics that can't be broken down, and they release chemicals and dyes into our rivers and soil. There's a concept called Cradle to Cradle, which was introduced by a German scientist Michael Brungart and a US architect William McDonough in 2002. It calls for a change in the way we design and make products. The traditional cradle to grave mentality means that products are discarded at the end of their life and head to landfills. The cradle to cradle mentality means that products are repurposed and given a new life after their first use. This is the concept behind denim installation. Denim jeans are usually made of 100% cotton, which can be broken down into fibers, unlike other clothing which are made of blended materials. This makes it ideal for organic home installation. Stores such as Guess, American Eagle Outfitters and Levi's encourage shoppers to donate their old jeans by offering them 20% off their next purchase. These old, donated jeans are sent to the Blue Jeans Go Green and Phoenix Fibers denim recycling programs. The jeans are then cut down into small pieces and zippers, buttons and rivets are removed from the mix. The remaining material is shredded into cotton fibers and then bundled into 1,000 pound bales. These bales are then shipped to the Bonded Logic facility where a variety of products are made. Ultra-touch wall insulation for homes is made by coating the fibers with a non-toxic borate solution and then spinning them at a high speed to create loose fiber forms that resemble cotton candy. This insulation can be found at Home Depot in many thicknesses. There's an R6.7, an R13, R19, and even an R30 version. The thicker the insulation, the higher the R value. This insulation can be difficult to cut into the proper width, so the company now makes them with perforated seams, similar to paper towels. These fibers can also be compressed to create ultrasonic acoustic panels that eliminate unwanted ambient noise and excess echo in spaces containing hard surfaces. They are available at Home Depot in 12 by 12 panels. They also make sound blankets to cover entire walls in home theaters, workout rooms, sports courts, basements and garages. These compressed fabric panels are also made for HVAC systems. They can be used as duct liners since they offer superior sound absorption and energy-saving thermal performance. Bonded Logic also sells loose denim insulation to shipping companies as an alternative to foam or plastic-based thermal protection products like Styrofoam. They can be used by companies shipping food, pharmaceuticals, flowers, gifts and a variety of other products that need controlled temperatures during the shipping process. I realized that there is a material in our homes that is very similar to denim insulation. Dryer lint. It's on a much smaller scale, but it's essentially the same principle. It's made of blended fibers though, not pure cotton. So denim insulation works the same way as fiberglass, mineral wool and rock wool insulation. The material itself doesn't provide much thermal resistance, but it's the air trapped in the pockets between the fibers, which you can see at a microscopic scale, that act as an insulator. Bonded Logic claims that their denim insulation has a lot of advantages over its biggest competitor, fiberglass insulation. The first is that it's an eco-friendly alternative. It's made of 85% recycled content that would have otherwise ended up in a landfill. The company estimates that it saves about 200 tons of waste denim per month. It also consumes less energy than fiberglass manufacturing because you are starting with an existing product. It's also a zero waste production because any scraps from the manufacturing process can be shredded and returned to the raw material supply. Another advantage is its superior sound absorption qualities, around 30% higher than fiberglass. It can block outdoor noise from traffic and airplanes and even reduce indoor sound transmission. The non-toxic borate solution that covers all these denim fibers makes it mold, mildew and fungi resistant and gives it a class A fire rating. Another big advantage is that it doesn't irritate your skin 
or your respiratory tract. Fiberglass insulation is made of fine shards of glass, which can become embedded in your skin if you handle it without gloves and embedded in your windpipe if you don't wear a mask. Denim insulation, on the other hand, can be handled without gloves. It also doesn't contain any VOCs or formaldehyde, which can off-gas. Now the disadvantages of denim insulation. It's approximately twice the cost of fiberglass insulation. It's priced in the same bracket as spray foam insulation, but it doesn't offer the same thermal resistance and air tightness. Another common complaint about denim insulation is that it's compressed and it's tough to fluff up. As we discussed earlier, the air trapped between the fibers acts as an insulator. So the more you are able to fluff it up, the greater the thickness and the higher the R value. But if these denim bats are compressed, they won't provide the same R value that they claim. Users have complained that three and a half inch denim insulation was actually two and a half inches thick, which is a big issue. So in conclusion, it's an excellent idea, but it isn't a perfect product that can change the home insulation industry. If the manufacturers can bring down the price significantly, it can become a viable alternative to fiberglass insulation. Maybe it would be better used for its acoustical properties rather than for its thermal performance. It could be an eco-friendly alternative to polyester sound absorbing panels. If it were to be used as insulation, it could be a better alternative to styrofoam in packaging. That's all I have for now. If you've used denim insulation and you have some feedback that you'd like to share, please leave me a message in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.